boys, how about girls? How we do it this morning? What up, skins? What y'all doing? I hope y'all ready for the show in Nashville. I know your boy is. Right now, I'm sitting here looking at the set list, and I'm looking at which songs I want to tell a small story about and which ones have a life lesson, because I like to speak to the younger crowd while I'm at my shows, especially being in the position that I'm in and being a person that's gone through a lot of shit over the years. I think it's only right for somebody that has that many people in front of them to be able to, you know, kind of encourage or give advice. And how I do it is I'll do it right before a song that correlates with a certain life lesson or a certain piece of advice. Usually I just wing it though and it, it takes up too much time and I don't want to feel like I'm rambling or something taking up y'all's time that you know y'all could be listening to a song and I definitely don't want nobody to be like shut up and sing the fucking song already. So I want to sit here and dial it in before the show and I'm done doing that. Next thing, so reaction pages. I got some advice for you, bro. Actually, first I got one thing I want to say. So I watched uh, Cliff Beat's reaction of Blue Jeans 2. Thank you, by the way. And I noticed he said, like, that a bunch of my supporters were, like, antagonizing him and being like, Why, you better do this, you better do this. Bro, a lot of those people are not followers of me. They're actually people who hate me, who want to fucking ruin me. So don't listen to those people. Second off, not every reactor has to jump on my shit and instantly react to it, bro. There's other artists out there in the world, you know what I'm saying? Like, they let them do what they want to do. Speaking of, to all you reaction pages out there that are starting off and being like, man, these people think I ain't reacting to it good enough, this, that, and the other. Man, fuck what everybody thinks. You know what I say? If I was a reactor, I wouldn't break down jack shit. I would just say how the song makes me feel or I would say uh, what the song reminds me of or makes me think of or makes me reminisce about. How do you feel about the song? How does the song make you actually feel? Like, fuck breaking the bars down. How does it make you feel? Just say that. Just say how you feel by listening to it. Have fun with it. If somebody's bitching being like, oh, you didn't break down this bar. Well, I'm sure there's a reaction page that loves breaking down all the bars. Actually, I know for a fact there is. That's the thing. Not everybody breaks down every bar. Some people just like to fucking vibe to the song. See, because everybody makes music different, but also people listen to music different. So if you're a reaction page and you like just vibing to the song, do exactly that. If you're one of those people that can break down every single bar and catch everything, then do that. Because then look, then you have two separate kinds of reaction pages. Not every reaction page could be the same, otherwise there wouldn't be any reaction pages. There'd be like five. Listening to music is something you should be comfortable doing, not something that feels like a job. And last thing about reaction pages, well really this is about anybody that has a YouTube account in general. Now some people might disagree, but this is my personal opinion. Don't let any viewers change how you do stuff. I mean, it's called you, you, tube for a reason. It's because it's a tube of who you are, YouTube. And if you do make changes to your YouTube account, make sure they're on your accord. It's because you're excited to change something. It's because it's just flat out something you want to do. I mean, otherwise they should have named it Them's Tubes. That's not a good name. Now, aside of music and aside of reactors, let's just talk about YouTube in general. YouTube has changed a lot over the years. Social media in general has changed a lot, but YouTube specifically used to be a different place. It used to be a place where it was legit a person in a room or a person somewhere doing something they enjoyed, like we were talking about a second ago. And it didn't seem like it was this mainstream engine. If you notice now, everything is kind of like cable TV. For real. You used to get on YouTube and you could find these humans who had vibrant personalities. Just didn't care. They were just, they were in their own world doing their own thing, which was fun. You found unique people that way. Uh, that's how solid groups or communities of people got formed on the internet. There was no cancel culture. There was no shadow banning. There was no mainstream entity on YouTube that was like trying to cover up other creators and be like, what, they don't exist? While the person they're covering up, being like, they don't exist, they're taking shit from them and just making the carbon copy of it. There was no popularity contest. There was just people who were 
popular and they really didn't care that they were popular. They were just still in their own world doing their own thing. Now, it's, it's more like, hi and welcome to another episode of and it's like, yeah, but that was on the TV. We, why, we don't want it here, too. Pretty much what I'm saying is it used to be something fun. Now we get on there and it's fucking uh, the, the war in fucking Pakistan. War in fucking bad stuff. And he's, he, he, this guy's fucking stupid, fucking idiot, fucking dumb fuck. Fuck him. War. And I know there's going to be some folks that's like, well, you do that too, up church. Yeah, but it's still the old school way, though. Like, Somebody could do something fucking horrible to me. I'm just gonna make fun of them. Make it funny, make it where people laugh. I've had people try to sue me for millions of dollars. I've had people try to fucking slap me with some fucking insane allegations. I don't threaten them, I just make fun of them. Cause it's the internet and that's what I'm used to is just cracking back, you know? It changed so fast. Bro, in the Vine days, bro, man, dude. Talk about having fun. This was the active internet era. Like, I remember driving to Georgia and staying the night with Jamie Hussey and Tasia Alexis for fucking days, just hanging out and fucking making content, like making funny videos, having a good time, going out to eat with each other. I remember standing in Jamie Hussey's driveway, dude, in Georgia. Sun's going down. We're just outside, walking around, bouncing back and forth ideas. Fucking uh, helping each other film our little pieces to our Vine videos. Like, where did that go? And why did it stop? Dude, the community of the internet back then was cool. I, the Vine conventions, bro. I remember everybody used to go to Mike Tyson's house. They'd have like a fuck ton of Vine people there. And it was everybody just hanging out. Once again, just hanging out, doing cool shit, and helping each other film, and having a good time. That era of the internet is been extinct for a minute. Everyone's just angry. Everybody's angry. Everybody's sad. And it don't have to be like that. And current time on the internet don't have to be like that. It just is. People are just okay with it, I guess. For myself, at least, you know, being intertwined with content creating for 10 plus years, you know, I remember when me and a Mary King was like the only people making videos on Facebook, dude. Remember that? Remember Amiri King back in the day? Shelby Silverado. Oh, them were the days, dude. I got cold chills, bro. But here's the thing. It's not extinct all the way. If you ask me personally for blue collar people who I personally think is the best and the most nostalgic with the way they do their videos and how funny they are and the character that they have for it, I think the best person for blue collar people if not one of the best on the internet, is Ginger Billy. And look at him. He's just being himself. That's it. He is still doing YouTube the old school way that it used to be done. And dude's killing it. Dude is killing it, bro. He could have his own fucking comedy show. But look, he sticks to YouTube. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Also, the internet has evolved to misconstrue what the real world is. There's a huge amount of information on the internet that is not actual information in real life. But people are taking this internet information and they are assuming that it's true or they are applying it to when they shut the camera off and they go out into the real world and that's their idea of the world is everything that's on here. But what you gotta realize is, is this is not a fun toy no more. This is an effective tool that really big companies are using to change your perception of the world, to change your perception of people, to change your perception of a certain place. Now, why is it being done? I don't know, probably something that has to do with money. I mean, doesn't everything in bad having to do with money? Like I said, I don't know why, but you don't have to know why to see that it's already happened and been happening and happening more and more and more. I guess that's where the saying it is what it is comes in, but it only is what it is because we make it what it is. The atmosphere our world has is up to us, collectively. But with that being said, look, everyone's being picked apart individually. Why? Because we've been programmed to be able to, I guess, think we're being picked apart when we're really not. If somebody looks at a person and goes, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. And then, you know, People on the internet are like, yeah, wrong, wrong, wrong. Then you are not going to be the authentic you you was that had nothing wrong with you. You're going to end up a version 
that now fits this other person's blueprint of what good is. And now you're being somebody you are not, which is actually bad for you. It's not good. That's the thing. Why do these certain people on the internet tell you this? Oh, what you're doing is bad. What you're doing is wrong. Because you're a threat to them. You're too resilient. You're too creative. You're too, your imagination's too big. You're too fucking unique. You're too authentic. They don't like how authentic and unique and resilient you are. Once again, what's the reason? I don't know. Probably money. Probably probably their business. If you're cooler than this motherfucker standing over here, you're going to get more business. Even though you don't care about the business, they do. That's why they're mad in the first place. Why do you think I seclude myself from everyone? People tell me all the time, they're like, oh yeah, dude, no one hangs out with you. No motherfucker, I don't hang out with no one. <laughs> don't get it fucking twisted. I do that on purpose because the past four years, everybody's been after what? My money. After what? My cosign. After what? My channel's viewers. They even want you guys. And it's like, if you were doing the damn thing, you would have your own, all of those. You wouldn't need a cosign. You wouldn't need nothing. That's the problem. Watered down content creators getting with non-watered down content creators. What does that do? It waters down both of you. This motherfucker's already watered down, but it also waters you down too. And why does this watered down content creator want to water you down? Because they don't care if you're watered down or not. They just want some money. They just want to sell a fucking shirt. They want to... Money. And so the outcome of whatever they would make was not watered down. It was actually stronger. And it made people want to hang out and create. Not just, not just have five content creators with one solid content creator with five other ones being like, bro, I can't wait to get these followers. Uh-oh, an acorn. Everyone run. But anyway, I'll leave you on this. What did I say at the end of 2023? I said 2024, all the phony-ass wannabe content creators are going to fall apart. The only ones that are going to survive are people that actually want to create content for people to watch to make people's life better, to make people laugh, to make people, to give advice. Those are the ones I said, this is the year of the bosses. Yeah, you remember. Look what's happened so far in 2024. Hey, I'm on fire, I don't know what to create. I don't have an imagination. Yeah, I fucking predict shit all the time. Way in advance, by the way. Been doing it for years. So what's the future of the internet look like? What's the future of content creating look like? What do I think's gonna happen? Here's what I think's gonna happen. <clears throat> How do you say this? I think we're about to get the second wave of the greatest time period of the internet from the past when it comes to content creating. And I think when this quote unquote second wave comes in, I think a few things are gonna happen. I think we're gonna see content creators that have been missing for a while come back. I think it's gonna remind people what genuine good content looks like. And honestly, I think it's gonna separate the ones who are in it for the money and the ones who are in it because this is their personality. And I think the atmosphere of the internet is gonna to go to a better state than it has been. And I think it's gonna make the atmosphere of the world a better place than it has been. That's what I think. I mean, this is the portal to the atmosphere of the world. So if everything I just said happens, and then that's probably what's gonna happen. And then when that happens, and then the ratings get the response they do, then after that happens, there'll either be a revamp of an old app like Vine, or there'll be another person come along that creates an app better or really close to what Vine was, then when that happens, these other apps that have been pushing all this war, Ukraine, war, death, bad stuff, they're gonna fall off or start to fall off. All the attention's gonna go to this new app that is hearing exactly what I'm saying. And then when that happens, it's gonna force all the other apps to get rid of the trash. And then when that happens, Long story short, people will go to individual independent content creators for entertainment and they'll stop going to some big mainstream channel and that's gonna affect these big companies. And we'll probably go through a small period where everybody's like, man, there's nothing being made. 
but it's only because people are gonna have to refind all the good shit again. But once they do, it's game over. And I have a feeling the next big app that gets made is not gonna be influenced by investors. I think this next app is gonna be like, mm, you fucked everything up last time. We think our investors is our content creators and the people that are on the app. Sorry, goodbye, get out of my face. And that's gonna be the end of big mainstream entertainment. The entertainment is gonna be in the hand of the entertainers and not in the hand of the handlers. We're living in a day and age where there's no position for a handler. Now for the entertainment industry, you used to have to have a handler. Then after that stage, they were like, oh, let me lend you a helping hand, I'm the handler. They had to convince you you needed them. Well, now we're living in a day and age where everyone knows you don't even need them. So it's only a matter of time before their position is extinct. So yeah, I'm excited for the future. I don't know about you, but I am. Creep Squad, until next time, hope y'all have a great morning. Hope y'all have a great day. And I can't wait to see y'all at the Nashville show, baby.